Now classically in medicine, people send for a culture and a gram stain. A culture is basically trying to grow bacteria on an agar plate. To, and if the bacteria grows, then you know something's infected. A gram stain is when you stain the fluid under a microscope to look for bacteria. In some areas of medicine, those two methods are very good, but in joint replacements, they don't work as well. Gram stain has been shown to not be very useful for joint replacements because it doesn't have a very good predictive value on whether something is infected or not. And cultures have about a 70 to 80 percent success rate in identifying infection. So out of 100 patients who have an infection, 20 will not grow cultures on an agar plate in the lab. So neither cultures nor gram stain are really the gold standard right now for diagnosing infection because they don't have the best accuracy. Um, there are some systemic lab tests that are out there and available. One is the CRP, which is the C-reactive protein. And this is basically something that's generated in the blood in response to an infection in a joint. The problem is it's not specific to joint infections. So if somebody also has a pneumonia, or somebody also has a disease like uh, rheumatoid arthritis or gout, the CRP can be elevated and it's confounded by those other diseases. The CRP in certain studies has been shown to have a better than 90% accuracy, but if you look carefully at those studies, they exclude patients with other diseases. So they're sort of tilting the table to their advantage so that the study looks like, you know, it has good results. There are other tests currently out there to potentially diagnose infection. Um, Bone scans have been used uh, throughout history, and there are several studies showing that they're not very accurate. PET scans have some literature out there where they could potentially be used to diagnose infection, but they really haven't taken off. They're more expensive, and people are concerned that they're not as accurate as um, you know, we think right now. And then people try to use MRIs and CAT scans, but again, they're expensive, and they haven't been shown to be diagnostic for infection. So what most clinicians do is they take all of these tests, combine them together, look at all of the results and try to get a hunch.